Hi guys and welcome to another bootstrap tutorial. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well we're going to continue on with our bootstrap basics theme here. Yesterday we created a page using the free brackets text editor. You can download it from a link below this video if you don't use a text editor. And we created a custom style sheet an external one and this is what we had not real exciting but it's the beginning so let's go ahead and add a nav bar to it or a menu structure and we're going to go to getbootstrap.com today again and I'll put this link below the video also we're just going to the nav bar section and I'm going to roll down I'm not going to get this one with the form in it because we just don't need it. I'm going to roll down a bit more to the one that just says nav right here. I'm going to copy everything from the top to the bottom. Hit control C. And open up our bracket software. Go back to our index.html which is where we're building our page. And just under the body the opening body tag there. I'm going to drop down a couple. I'm going to paste in what we just copied there. And I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit by selecting and hitting my tab key to pull it across. There we go. Now what we've actually got here, if I save this and we take a look at it, Control S to save back to the site. Now when I refresh, we should have a menu bar up at the top here. Let's refresh. There it is. We've got our nav bar brand or the name of our site or whatever your brand is. And there we've got our little menu items just here. So again, it doesn't look too interesting, but it's pretty cool. And it's also got, if I hit the F12 key, I'm using Google Chrome here. I'm going to hit the responsive toggler here. I'm going to go up, take a look at it on an iPhone. If I just make this 100% so you can see, you can see we've got our little responsive toggle right here. The main menu disappears at about, probably about 980. Let's put it on responsive and we can find out. There's our menu right there. If I shrink it down, yep. Yeah right around 980 just above 990 it looks like our toggle appears and our menu disappears if we go up higher than that our menu reappears and the toggle's gone so it's got pretty much everything we need here and I'll just get rid of that now if we go back and take a look what we've actually got So here's our nav, there's the opening with brackets. If you click on an opening tag for something, it'll also highlight the closing tag, which is really useful. So here's the actual whole navigation. The nav bar brand just underneath it is this first little bit here, and you can change it to whatever the name of your site is. Or, control S, I'm just going to save that and we'll go back. And when I update, that should have changed to my new site or my bootstrap site, I should say. Um, or, of course, you can insert an image in there to make a logo. And we'll be doing that at a later date. Now, underneath there, you've got a little button. And that's that little toggler, the hamburger menu that's sometimes referred to as. You can't see it in full screen, but like I showed you, when you shrink it down, you can. And this div class of collapse navbar collapse, this is our just main menu structure here, which is home features pricing and disabled here. I'm not going to play with this today. We'll do this. We'll structure our menu another time. 
But what I will do is just show you a few ways of moving your menu around. Because at the moment, we've got it aligned left, we can have it aligned center, or we can have it to the right. It's very easy because this is built on the flex system. So all we have to do is justify our content. And I'll put this link underneath the video as well. It shows you how to justify your content left, right, center. And I'll show you another way of doing it around and between as well, which can be quite useful, but it's not necessarily because you can do a lot of this with padding. It's just a useful feature. So if we let's just copy this justify content end and it's a class it's got a dot in front of it there you don't need to copy the dot I'm just going to hit control C to copy go back to our brackets and here's our collapsible nav bar or our menu here in the class section between these two inverted commas I'm going to just add a space after the last entry there and paste in that justify content end and save control s go back to our site now when I refresh this should push this over to the right hand side there we go it's now on the right hand side really easy to do and if you want it in the middle just change that end to center Now when I refresh it should pull it back to the center here there we go and what it's doing is putting it in the container the center of the container which is just to the right of our navbar brand container here so it's putting it in the center of that div right there and if you want it back left again you don't have to do left you could do left or you could just take that whole entry out so we'll say left and that should put it back to the left control s to save but by default it's on the left hand side anyway so you can just as easily delete that entry and it'll still stay on the left there now there's other things you can do here if you want to use the flex method to organize this stuff what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we've already taken that away, that's fine. I'm going to put this inside here. I'm going to put that to center. Now I'm one down, I'm not on the div collapse navbar collapse I'm on the unordered list with the class of navbar nav which is actually our list of menu items here so if I save that that should still work it's work but because it's justifying within what we've got here it's not going anywhere so if I inspect this I'm using Google Chrome here. I've just hit F12 or right clicked and hit inspect. And it's brought up our oh, fantastic inspector here. There's the bit, there's the bit where we put content center. With the the Chrome inspector, as long as you're on the elements tab and the styles tab, you'll have the HTML on the left and the CSS on the right. So there's what we put in there and we 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 put in the justify content center well it's done it but if I hover over there you can see that that actual container is very short I mean it's only 12% or so of the width so what we got to do is we got to tell that that we want it to be the whole width to take up all the available room here so I'm going to give it a style after the last inverted comma there you can give it a style equals open and close some inverted commas and inside you can put the style 
which is the CSS. So I'm just going to say width 100%. Now we could put this in our external style sheet too, but this is fine for on, on page CSS like this. So now if I save that and we go back and I'll refresh, you see that's jumped to the middle because now our container, when I hover over it, you see will be the same, will be the full width, full available width up at the top there. That's fine. Now we've done that, we can use some of these other styles which won't work if we just use it on the top container there. So we could say justify content between. Let's go back to our instead of center, let's say between. And that will give it equal amounts of space between each of our menu items here. Let's say that control S and refresh. And you see you've got home features, pricing and disabled and it's divided the space up equally in between them, which is pretty cool. And another great one to use if you want to use this method would be around and we'll save that. What that's going to do, it's going to put equal spacing around each of our menu items. Like I say, you don't have to do this, but it's kind of can be useful depending on what kind of style you're going to make. So, We've got the same amount in between each side of this. So that's kind of a nice way of doing it. But like I say, this is not really necessary unless you want to play with this. But I just thought I'd explain those flex justify contents for you if you wanted to use this method. Like I say, if you just want it at the start or the end, you can just put it up here. But if you want to use the around or the between, then we need to tell this to be 100% so that we can employ those. So let's put it back how it was, which is pretty much how we'll continue from here, because also we'll be styling these at a later date with padding, so we can pretty much put them where we want. And I cut off a inverted comma there. I don't know if you noticed there, but that when I did that, a lot of it went red below there. That's always an indicator that you've got something missing. Brackets lets you know. And I just cut off that inverted comma there. So there we have it. Tomorrow we'll start on the decoration, the background color, etc. But that'll do for today's video. So I'm going to save that, go back, and it should put it how we want it. There we are, the default state right there. So I hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're interested in web development, take a look down below. We've got some great free courses down there, as well as some premium courses with some huge discounts for our YouTube subscribers. So do check it out. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.